black and white image of what was happening. What is unfolding on the ground in Kyrgyzstan at the moment? What happened at first media was very excited with the uh, April change of power because it was looking at it of, as something positive and that's kind of understandable. And the co-leader was a yes, woman. Yes, and mm -hmm. then it was a woman and they all looked um, more honest, uh, more um, agenda driven rather than driven by uh, power grabbing. That what happened, it all disintegrated in much more kind of chaotic scenes and uh, there was also violence associated with that and there were ethnic divisions and there were poverty and comp resource competition and regional power play and all sorts of a uh, very complicated mix. Then it became much more difficult to media present uh, this um, picture which was going in different directions. Well, it had implications for the war in Afghanistan, of course. Yes, it has implications because what um, nobody wants to see is um, the stabilization of the whole region and uh, what um, nobody wants to see is that the events in Afghanistan would get linked somehow with um, local politics and local instability in Central Asia. And the danger of it is not very acute now, but uh, in longer term, that's where events may be heading. Can we look forward to some free and fair elections soon in Kyrgyzstan then? And who, who do you tip to emerge triumphant? My own um, opinion is that elections is not something which the country needs right now. It needs um, stabilization first, it needs sensible more kind of technical type of government, stable leadership to get through the um, immediate aftermath of violence, just bring some basic We'll have to see whether anything aid. like that yeah. happens. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. A couple of weeks ago, the world held its breath over a bizarre incident which appeared to flare up over the pruning of a tree on the Lebanese border with the Zionist <coughs> State of Israel. The incident left four dead, including a senior Zionist soldier, and uh, for a few hours anyway, many believe the deaths would ignite a new conflict similar to the brutal 2006 summer war with Hezbollah. In many ways, I think we were all thankful this story went almost as quickly as it arrived. But are we missing a bigger headline? Let's welcome Ali Karaldine, editor of the Lebanese News. And uh, hopefully you can give us a, a full analysis. How close were we to seeing another war, 2006 style? I mean, you know, with Israel, it's always uh, the responsibility of war. And uh, if we're talking about this incident specifically, uh, which happened, you know, they tried to uproot a tree from a Lebanese land. And you can see the picture. Ah, so it wasn't a simple matter of pruning a few leaves? No, not really, no. I think they were testing to see, you know, what the uh, Lebanese reaction will be. And what happened is really they were surprised how the Lebanese army responded to their aggression. Do you think that Washington is washing its hands of uh, the situation in Lebanon? And is, uh, as some people mm. are saying, giving Israel a green light for uh, uh, renewed attacks. They are mm. breaching the no-fly zone mandated under UN resolutions as usual. Yeah, I mean, you know, washing their hand, I mean, I, I wish they, will <laughs> they would wash their hand, you know, of Lebanon. But uh, I, I don't think so, you know, and giving the green light, but they never protected Lebanon anyway, the USA. I mean, the Israeli, they don't really need the green light to attack Lebanon. They don't need the justification. I but think they would be very foolish to do it again because um, they certainly uh, didn't leave Lebanon victorious in 2006. They, uh, I was in Lebanon a couple of weeks ago and they left behind 19 tanks worth $5 million mm. each. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this is what makes really Lebanese, uh, you know, feel more safe now because what happened in 2006, you know, now the Israeli, they count till 10 before they make any like uh, aggressive steps or, you know. And what about the unity cabinet in 
in Beirut mm. because people are often, I mean, one can look at so many different media sources and detect the imminent collapse of the unity government. What, what do you see at the moment? Of course, we did, we did yeah. see these amazing pictures from uh, Mr. Nasrallah mm. uh, about the Hariri assassination, after all, uh, which constantly seemed to be the point of contention, didn't it? Uh, it is, you know, I mean, this is especially this issue, the uh, special tribunal for Lebanon, you know, since like uh, four years ago, you know, they start their investigation on like uh, false witnesses. Uh, they arrested people without evidence for four years. And uh, what, what think way do you think Washington wants the tribunal to? Uh, the, what, what the, I mean, want? it's very obvious they, they don't want actually the truth. They want to get the resistance in Lebanon. This is the most important reason. I spoke to some um, a Hezbollah MP while I was over there, and uh, he was saying that emphatic that Hezbollah had absolutely nothing to do with the Hariri assassination. Where would you say the finger of blame lies? I mean, it's very obvious, you know, after uh, the picture we've seen on the TV, you know, this is the when Sayyid uh, Nasrallah in his news conference showed us, you know, this picture of uh, surveys, Israeli plane taking picture on the air 